Hello everyone, I'm Jeremy Powers and I am here today with one of the greatest of all time, Sven Nies. And Sven, thank you for coming on. Thank you. We're here at the cycling center, your cycling center, the Sven Nies Cycling Center in Ball, Belgium, um, which is home of the GP Sven Nies yes. and now the Sven Nies Cycling Academy. So we're spending a day with you as you teach the next generation of cyclocross riders. Tell me what we're going to do today. Well, learn them a lot of cyclocross skills. Uh, not especially cyclocross, we have also uh, kids who are riding on the mountain bike. Um, when they are young, they need to develop um, everything, so uh, we let them drop, uh, we, we let them ride rock gardens, uh, um, try to learn some reaction uh, up, and, uh, up and on the bike, uh, cornering, everything. So um, it's during the whole week, from Monday until Friday, kids between uh, 5 and 14 years. I think it's really cool that these kids are going to be able to learn with you and hang out and spend an entire day. Belgium's dominance in cyclocross has been the storyline from the birth of the sport. The country undeniably has more medals in the discipline of cyclocross than any country and probably some combined. So getting to spend a day with a guy who has had such a big part of putting the sport on the map, well, it was pretty cool. I was also able to participate in the day's festivities. Here, Sven's showing the kids how to properly put me into the tape. And then we teamed up to take the kids on in start practice. Then he taught us all about the basics of explosivity training. And a little bit of stretching. Okay, it's clear. It's clear that we could all learn a few things from Sven Nies. Yeah. Sven Nies is regarded as one of the most prolific cross racers of all time, not just for his results, which include four world championship medals, 13 overall super prestige victories, and 50 World Cup wins. It was also his determination, style, and technique that captured fans' attention all over the world. Nicknamed the Cannibal from Ball, which is his hometown in Belgium. And I have to say, with a nickname like that, I think he's a little more lighthearted these days. But that determination that he used in his racing career has turned into a desire to inspire the next generation of great cross riders and give back to the sport that he loves. And on the pitch. And in the pedal. Hey, come on, come on, come on. This is the Sven Nies boot camp. It's a little bit like military training, but with Sven's panache, and the kids are loving it, and they're... It's great. It's absolutely perfect. Jongens, we gaan dat nog eens doen, hè? En zo kort mogelijk bij elkaar. Sven styled it up and demonstrated how to ride off a six-foot drop and then sent the jaw-dropped kids off to lunch. But there was no way that we were leaving that property without a tutorial on how to ride the infamous stair set that broke the internet last year when Sven uploaded a video of his son Tebow riding the stairs of the GP Sven Nee. Even I feel adrenaline if I'm doing that. <laughs> This section is also part of GP Sven Nice, which is the iconic Sven Nice classic race that's happening every, I think, I believe it's every January 1st. It's the, the first race of the new year. So really cool because everyone comes out in their new kit if they've signed to a new team or if their team has taken on new sponsors. This is the race where everyone gets to show that off. Um, very iconic race and that big picture that's up top of Sven winning, I believe, was the last time that he won it in his World Champions kit. So very cool to be here with so much history. Um, but obviously being able to see this section and then look at it, it really is daunting. Like if you look at it and you think, oh, I didn't know if I could ride it, especially from the videos on the internet and stuff like that, you think you have to see it to believe it. The thing that makes it so unique is the narrowness of of this post here. So this post is actually, when you come up here, you know, if you weren't very skilled and, and, you, and you didn't do it, you would hit, you know, you would hit your bars. So the idea that you sort of have to come into this with the right amount of speed, you have to be at an angle. And then when you're here, you pull over, you pull the front wheel to the, to the side, and then you, you're here, but then you have to do like a lunge, a lunge forward with the bike to be able to get it over these last two stairs because there isn't enough space. How cool that we were able to be here and check this out and do it with the master himself. So I'm gonna try to get out of the way, but Sven's gonna hit this and then I'm gonna take some pointers. Now 
not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect! <laughs> he still has it! <laughs> Day one of Sven's clinic is in the books. The children grabbed some more pictures and rode around a bit after things concluded. We changed out of our kits and headed over to the museum, which is also at the property, for a quick walkthrough and a history lesson about the sport from the man himself. Sven is going to take us through what I would call a shrine, but is more than that. It is a very inclusive space that tells us all about the history of the sport. Of course, all of your accolades and the things that you've been able to do in your career, but, um, but this is a really fun spot. Tell us a little bit about what we're gonna see in here. Well, all things that uh, come together uh, on an event that calls cyclocross. Uh, the starting line, and here it all starts, and then you see all pictures of riders from the past, uh, bikes from the past, but also uh, that we are racing with the last few years. Uh, we're learning a little bit more about tires, uh, trophies, stories from the fans, yeah. everything is involved. Of course, jerseys from all the champions uh, from World Cup. Erwin Verwecker, Bart Welles, um, Paul Herregers, all the champions from, from the past, but also from Wout van Aert when he was a Belgian champion uh, yes. in the past. Uh, the girls are involved, uh, Prevost yes, uh, is here. All disciplines are uh, on the wall, cyclocross, mountain bike, BMX, trial. Yeah, and then you have this, the, follow the course uh, from the start with all the pictures uh, from the nice events that we have uh, for the moment, like Zonhoven, yes. uh, the, the, the curl, like we say it yes. uh, in Belgium. What does that mean? Uh, the curl, that means um, it's, it's... Like a sloping, like, yeah. like it's like a theater. Yeah, it's like a theater. Yeah. Like, it's like a football stadium. Actually. Yes, yes. Really, the atmosphere from the people that yeah. cheer you on, that's really nice. Yeah. Cool. So, and then uh, you have all my victories during my career. They are standing uh, on top. From uh, 98 until the end of the uh, Experience Center 2016, where I won my last two races of the F1. And, I, and I, I don't want to say, but I think, is it 50 World Cup wins? Yes. That's pretty cool. And is it uh, nine national titles. Nine national titles. And I had four, four world, world titles, titles, two under 23, and two yes. at the elite category. Yes. And then, yeah, I think 13 super prestige overall rankings. Yeah. Uh, a lot of great things. A lot of great things. Yes, all right, down the road, down the down track. The road. Well, There's actually, yes. Stories from all uh, people that are involved in cyclocross now, but also in the past. Girlfriend of Eli is a bit. Yes. Uh, my coach, um, Brooke Watts, organizer of uh, Cross Vegas yes. uh, in the past. Um, the father of Bart Welles. A uh, very iconic face. Yes, and we have it in three different languages. Yeah, which so is very can, inclusive also. You can see it in English, in French, and in, in Dutch, of course. Yes. Uh, pictures of big heroes uh, yes. in cyclocross. I know, this guy looks so I familiar. Know, I don't know if you know him, but he's, he was an American <laughs> guy. He won a lot of races, yeah. and he's very, very, important for cyclocross in the US. It's Jeremy Powers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The man well, at the moment. He's yes. the man at the moment. Yes. He was really young when he won the first uh, his first world title I in know. Tabor. Unbelievable. I think he was just he, his first world championships in the elite category. Uh, unbelievable what he's doing now. He yeah. won Amstel Gold Race this year. I know. Um, he doesn't know his limits yet. I know. I know. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know what else he'll do. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't. My, maybe this is my guy. Yes, uh, I'm organizing everything around Telenet Fide Alliance, uh, and Tone is the leader of the gang uh, in the Telenet Fide Alliance. Yes. Uh, my son is already here uh, with a story of his dad. I love it. Maybe I need to tell him with the next plate uh, the dad about. Uh, <laughs> The next champions, yeah. we'll see. I love it. I love it. I don't know. Yeah. This is actually something really um, special in all around cyclocross. That yes. makes cyclocross also bigger. The postcards. Of course. Everybody wants to have a postcard with a picture of their riders. Yes. Signed them. Um, it comes actually from France. Trophies, of course. Yes. Are here. It's, uh, what, which, and which of these would be your favorite? In your, if if you had course. to pick one. I know, can we see the it? Couple, um, I, it's, it's glued. I okay, it's, it's glued, yeah, glued. okay. Yeah, we'll leave it there. We don't want people to touch them anyway. And then you have the stories, and actually it's... So it's very Belgian It's then. really cool, you can, you can uh, take a beer, yeah. but you can listen to a story that's involved in cyclocross. Hello. A story that's uh, coming out of cyclocross, 
a story about the race in Baal, a story about the coldest world championship, a story about uh, fans of Bart Welles, uh, and all uh, in different languages. I love it. I love it. That's so cool. Very, very, very cool. The, the campers, how you say it in English? The, yes, the... It's a, right. yeah, it's a mobile home. You can actually see in the window of a, of a, of a mobile home. I love it. Uh, the story of Tone and Tess Art uh, that are preparing their race. And a lot of people are standing they, there and they say, what's happening in that car? Yeah. This, for me, this is how it all started. Yeah. I won my first world championships in Munich under 23 jumping barriers. Mm -hmm. Uh, really quick, yeah, and that helped me to win my first world championship. <laughs> uh, it made me famous, uh, and a lot of kids after me uh, yeah. done it. I and know. now it's if you now don't jump, year off the back. Yes. So and Tom Meuse is talking about how he's doing it. He's jumping actually really high. I know. He is more than seventy. Arguably the, the best. Yeah. These these are images of uh, how I trained. Um, these are images from my last year. Uh, they uh, made a documentary of my last year. And you can see how we train in Mallorca, in the training camp, uh, preparing a race, training on the road. Um, it's not only about riding your bike, but also uh, being flexible, core stability, running in summer, in winter, everywhere. So people can uh, learn a little bit more about the what's. All right. How many power you need to know to, to have 200 watts, uh, 425 watts? Yep. Uh, because before we only talked about heart rate. Yeah. And now, if you're watching TV, it's all about how many watts you can pedal. Yeah. And uh, they need to learn step by step what it is. Right. And uh, to feel uh, the difference between 200 and 425 watts. I love it. Yeah. Or 1500 here. Yeah. But that bike we don't have because it's a little, <laughs> a little bit too much. This is actually the Niels Albert zone. Okay. Niels was famous for his riding through the sand. Yes. Uh, he won Coxeira World Championships in the sand. Yes. And um, he talked. He talked about uh, how he's riding through the sand. But also you can experience yourself what it is to ride through the sand. So you can play a game and there is a handlebar. So you push on the button and then you can ride through the sand. And it's the course in Zonhoven and you need to ride through the sand. You can go left and right and you see the hard trail where you need to ride. Uh, after a few seconds, you need to do a corner. You can even crash if you want. <laughs> Look, I'm going to ride into the fence. Oh no! Yeah, yeah, yeah there's a crash. <laughs> old bikes uh, from uh, old champions, uh, 10 times national champion, Rollo Liboton, five time world champion. How, how he rides cyclocross. Yeah, so you know crazy. all those things. So it's crazy, unbelievable. Isn't it? And now, if you see this bike, you know why they need to run more than we. Right. Yeah. Narrow tires. That's right. Um, it's a different They story. need to take a decision before they came on the barrier what they're going to do yeah. because they are not clicked in, but they are, how you say it? Yeah, yeah, stuck. Stuck, yeah. they are stuck. Totally. And then you have the uh, world champion uh, bike from Paul Herregers in the sand pit in Coxhead. Wow. Uh, this is actually a little bit more like yeah. it is now. Yeah, but um, also with the really big tires, 34 tires, it's, which... It's not I, allowed anymore. I know, at the beginning of my career you could have, That's but right. uh, now is, is not allowed. Then you have Niels Albert's bike. Coxhead, the World Championship, same course, different bike, uh, much lighter. Uh, mine also, but yeah, here is a lot of technology. ISO speed in the back, yes. uh, electronic shifting, yep. that's not there yet. Yep. Um, so it's completely different. And the next step is disc brakes. Yes. So we need to have a disc brake bike. A disc brake bike over here. <laughs> Soon. Yeah. I love it. I'm almost every day I'm here and I love it. Yeah, I'm, you can I'm, see the This passion. is cyclocross energy. It gives me so much yeah. uh, a good feeling and, and, and see all those kids, all those um, older people that also coming with their e-bikes. And, yes. and uh, yeah, that's, that's for me, that's a, a dream come true. Sven, thank you so much for having us today at the camp. That was really, for me, having also done a lot of cyclocross camps, just the amount of kids that are here and the, all of the things that you're teaching them and the skills that you're giving them and obviously the passion that you have is with so many great results. I think for them, it's not only inspirational, but it's like, it's a part of the sport that I think everyone is gonna really enjoy seeing. And so for you, I'm just curious to know like, 
giving these kids the pointers and giving them the drills and the reaction time and these like ideas of things to go home with and um, what like what does it encompass for you? Obviously, it's it's special. You can it's, see the energy and the passion. Yes, it's amazing to see how many things they can learn on a few days. Yeah. And coming afterwards on a race and see the kids and they say hi and hey, I can show you what I what I learned at home and 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 afterwards they're going to a race they have a license they start racing they are the first podium they sent me a mail with the pictures of the podium and then i say oh yeah this is for me this is what i want i had i, I learned so many things during those 20 years that i want to give them to the young kids now because that's the future of course. and we have all the experience over here we have the infrastructure over here we need to let the sport grow and i can't do this alone it's a small country it's an important part of cyclocross, but we need to do this with other champions in other countries. Like you did in the past, we need to do this um, all over the world. And then we can step by step, let the sport grow. And that's my dream. That's right. Yeah, and I, I agree. And I think that we have so much uh, momentum with the yes. sport. We are at a place now where it's so well televised. There's so much uh, infrastructure, like you said, and there's all this publicity and there's there's more and more coming. And so, yeah, you have to just say, I'm doing something, yes. you know? And this is part of doing something. You can't just say, oh, I'd like to do it. I think it'd be good. No, doing something. And you're out here as a multiple time world champion, literally the most successful by the numbers rider that we've ever seen. So to see you literally out here working with these kids one-to-one -one is, uh, I think everyone should be humbled. And it's not just for Dutch or Belgian riders. You speak no. great English. If you said I Canadians, do my best. Canadians want to come over and they yeah. want to do something, English people, English speaking people want to come over and spend a day with you, yeah. they can. They can they, bring their kids, come on a holiday, stay at the B and B, yeah. have a snack at there. Everything is here. And yeah. Everything is here. Your and, uh, cycling playground, cyclocross playground, in fact. Yeah, that's true. No, that's what we try to do. Uh, to, uh, to bring kids from all over the world, uh, learn them all skills of cyclocross, and see them on races, see them winning uh, against other competitors. That's what Cyclocross is all about. Well, I was inspired and I think a lot of other people were. Thank you for the time today and we'll see you soon. Having a great tip in a trip in, in Europe and maybe we see each other in Waterloo or yeah. Iowa or yeah. uh, all the other races. Yes, very well. So that was a day with Sven Nice. I hope you guys liked this video. If you do, please leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see some other great Cyclocross videos, check those out right there on your screen.